I'm Steve from This Oak With Cars and right now I'm in Minnesota. I'm going over to look at a vehicle that I'm thinking about buying. So I'm going to take a look at it and if I like it, I'm going to try to drive this thing home. Well, here it is. This is a 1966 M109. So, so this is basically an M35 with a shop box on the back. There's a lot of potential with this truck. I have a pretty long way to go to drive this home. And this truck, max speed is about 50 miles per hour. So it's going to take me a lot longer to get home than it did to get here. In the back of the truck, you can see it's basically a big open box. All the military equipment is still in there. The switches, the heater, it does have a venting system. Uh, and it does have lighting in, this, in the roof. And it also has electrical outlets up above those shelves. So there's a lot of potential with this truck. Comment below and tell me what you would do with this truck. It's about 90 degrees out today, so I'm glad that the windshields do open up in the front. Okay, here we go. I have about a four hour drive home. Let's get started. All right, I'm at my first fuel stop and I don't know what's going on, but can't keep this from foaming up. Haven't pumped very much in here by now. Looks like it's finally about full, but I've only put five gallons in. The gauge said half on the fuel gauge. I'm at my first fuel stop. I probably still have about four hours to go. Everything's going all right. It's pretty noisy, but the I was wearing a set of Beats headphones, which have noise canceling, and it, they work pretty amazing. It really does quiet down the inside of this truck. You can see right here, the shift pattern is not standard. It's a dog leg, so first gear is down here, but fourth and fifth are reversed. And that's so that someone can sit in high gear in the middle of the seat and not have the shifter in the way of them. So that's why they put fifth gear up there. isn't working it always reads half so that's a uh, kind of a pain with as far as I need to go I think I have about half a tank left right now and the speedometer doesn't work either but I don't really have to worry about speeding so that's okay you pretty much go top speed all the time well fuel stop number two is completed um, actually in Iowa now, but I have two more hours to drive and this thing's actually getting better gas mileage than I thought it was. I think I've only put in about 
maybe 20, 25 gallons so far. And I've driven for a couple hours now. made it here's the last fuel stop this is the town just uh, north of mine so I just have a little bit to go I stopped and put about another 20 gallons of fuel in it's too dark right now so in the morning I'll give you a more detailed walk around this truck All right it's the next morning I'll give you a little tour around this truck on the side of the truck you can see that there's windows there's three on each side it does have these aluminum shades that you can push up over the whole window or pull down and expose the window and then the window does pop out and it does have screens on it as well so that's pretty nice around the back you can see that there's two doors on the rear one larger than the other you have to open the one on the right first you can keep the door on the left in place and stick the ladder here below the right door let's take a closer look inside I did get three extra wheels and tires with the truck. One of the tires looks pretty much brand new. It still has all the nubs on it. Up here at the front is the controls for the gas powered heater, which you can see over there. It draws diesel fuel from the fuel tank and will run off of either the battery or shore power. Over here is a main power cutoff as well as a few fuses and a switch. Here's an intercom speaker. This is the little desk where some equipment mounted. Over here is a little access door. You can let fresh air in. It has four of these handy shelves. A few of them have these little shelves below them, as well as these pockets for storing things. It has power strips running along both sides. I did get a full set of tire chains with this truck. You do need those when you're in snow and ice. And I also got a couple spare front windshields. The passenger side windshield does have a little crack in it. I also got a box of spare parts with it. On the back by the rear door is the switches for the overhead lights. You can see there's a switch for blackout lights as well as the regular lights. You can see the different colors up here. This lens is blue, whereas the others are clear. Back here is a fan to vent out air from here, as well as a lamp that you can change the brightness of. Under the hood sits a big inline six cylinder. Now there were different manufacturers for the engines, but they were all built to the same military spec, so no engine is really any better than the others. This one is equipped with the optional heater, so you see the little scoop that the air intake comes, goes through the blower, and then that sends it through that hose into the cab to blow hot air onto your feet or up onto the windshield. Look at how big that air filter canister is. You can ford through water as high as that air intake on the front fender there. Everything is sealed on this engine, even the dipstick is threaded. These ports on the front of the cab are where the shore power would be plugged in so that you could run the things on the inside of the box with generator power. I'll show you inside. This particular truck was built by Kaiser Jeep in 1966. These trucks are rated for carrying two and a half tons of cargo off-road and five tons on the road. This truck has the optional hard top on it. Kind of looks like a soft top on the inside, but it is a hard top. On the dashboard, you have a fuel gauge, a speedometer, a tachometer, temperature gauge. This is the voltmeter. You have air pressure for your brakes and oil pressure as well as the high beam indicator over here down here these are the controls for the heater and this truck has the air operated four-wheel drive so you flip it over like that once your air is built up and that will engage the front axle to give you six wheel drive over on the other side of the steering wheel you have your engine stop this is for the fuel pumps a throttle lock 
as well as your lighting system. This down here is for an ether can that you can use for starting when it's really cold out. I was impressed. Uh, they rate it at 56 miles per hour in fifth gear. And there's a big thing here on the dash that says max speed 50 miles per hour. But I was consistently doing 60 miles an hour on the way back. So that was a nice surprise. The engine is mechanically governed. So you just basically hold your foot to the floor the whole time. The shift pattern on these trucks is a little different. You have reverse and first, and there's a little detent that you have to push against to get it into either of these gears. These gears are also non-synchro. The rest of the gears two, three, four, and five are all synchronized. And fourth is in a non-standard location. That way, when you're traveling down the road, you can have someone sitting in the middle and the gear lever isn't sitting in their lap. Down here between the seats, this lever is the high and low transfer case selector. This model does have a glove box, and I did get the owner's manual. This is the official U.S. Army owner's manual. If you look on the data plate, this is a 1636. If you come down to the owner's manual, the 1636 is the M109A3 uh, shop truck. And this truck was available with a winch or without. This one does not have a winch. And this is a multi-fuel truck, so you can put anything into the fuel tank that burns. Whether it's gasoline, diesel, used motor oil, whatever you want you can put in there as long as you've mixed it to the right consistency. Obviously there's a lot of potential with this truck, so let me get you some dimensions in case you're thinking about buying something like this. The interior width is about 90 inches, and the interior length is 12 feet long. I hope you liked this video. I think this truck has a lot of potential. Comment below what you would do with this truck. Make sure to keep up to date by clicking the subscribe button.